and welcome to our latest Tudor History Challenge. You're trying to look at the answers, aren't you? <laughs> no, I do too. Now, we've reached 30,000 subscribers. I can't quite believe it's Amazing, that. and thank you to every single one. Yes, thank you. If you haven't subscribed, there's still a chance to do it. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for following along with my Tudor History uh, videos. So, of course, reaching 30,000 subscribers means that I get another chance to humiliate my dear husband, Tim, with another so Tudor lovely. History Challenge. Tudor History Challenge number five. I get a chance to poke fun at your expense and quiz you on your knowledge of Tudor History. And by the way, I'm modelling our channel's uh, t-shirt. What does it say, Tim? On this day in Tudor History, something bad happened. Because that's... A lot of people comment that oh, something bad really does. Happened. Although recently, people have been commenting, wow, not a bad thing for a few days. So lots of, lots of uh, bad things do happen in Tudor history, though. Yeah. The executions, yuck. Okay, now if you don't know anything about Tim, um, well, let me tell you that this is techie Tim, really. Tim helps me with all the techie stuff. He edits my videos. Um, he helps me with my website. He you help me run the Tudor Society. You publish history books. I do. Um, but you don't actually, you've never studied Tudor history in your no. life. No, well, I pick up you? is from what you talk about in your yes. daily chats and on your articles. And actually your interest, if you've got an interest in history, which you do, but your interest is the Egyptians and pyramids, Oh, definitely, yes. Not Tudor history. I'm afraid all. not. So, yes. Which is why this is fun, of course. Yes. This, this, your knowledge of Tudor history is from indoctrination, from just sort of it seeping in as you edit videos yes. and yes. publish history books. Yes. Now, today's Tudor history challenge is either going to be very easy for Tim or very humiliating for Tim because I'm going to test him on the Boleyn family who, of course, I have been researching and writing about for well over 10 years now. And obviously, you've come on a few tours with me. Uh, you've visited places uh, to do with the Berlins. You've uh, read my books on the Berlins, I think. Some so, of them, yes. So, yes. So, surely, Tim is going to know the answers to these questions. I've got to hide the paper so you can't see. Okay. Are we ready? Number one. The Berlins moved to Hever Castle in Kent in around 1505, okay? But where did they call home before that? Oh, I love these questions. They're just, they're just such good. I'm going to go for Blickling. Blickling what? Hall. <gasps> Blickling wow. Hall. I'm quite impressed. Oh, am I right? No, yes, yes. <laughs> That's you, get, good. you get one point for that. I'm not giving you a point for this bit, but just out of interest, in which um, area of England is it? Uh, well, I'm assuming from that that it's not in Kent. Mm -hmm. So let's go... Um, no, no idea. Buckinghamshire. No, it's in Norfolk. Norfolk? So East Anglia. Okay. okay. I didn't know but that. But I'm not giving him a point. I wouldn't be giving him a point anyway for that one. Okay, question two. Thomas Boleyn, father of Anne Boleyn, held two earldoms, okay? He was, he had an Irish earldom, he was Earl of Ormond, and he was also Earl of, and it's a county in the UK, it's an English county. I'm going to go for Wiltshire. I'm really impressed, Whoa. yes. Yeah. So 10 years of indoctrination have had this some effect. This is quite impressive. Okay, this is an easy one now. Well, I think it's easy, but you never know. Number three, what was Elizabeth Boleyn's maiden name? Elizabeth being the uh, mother of Anne Boleyn, Thomas Boleyn's wife. Okay, it's a good question. And I'm going to go for Howard. Well done, yes. She was one of the very famous well, that, Three Howards. out of three so far, it's downhill Three from out of three. I don't know. It's hard to know what seeps into that brain. It is. Yours, you either really. know it or you don't know it. Number four. How many siblings did Anne Boleyn have that we know of? Uh, including the ones that we think died when they were young children. I'm going to go for five. 
How do you work out five? How many siblings? Five in the family, so four. Okay, five in the family. I just helped four too much one. Then, Four I? plus one. Okay, so four. She had four siblings. She was five in the family. Five if you count Anne, obviously, but she had four siblings. You'll let me get away okay. with that one. Yeah. Bonus point, because I knew what you meant. Bonus point if you can name all four of them. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Well, we've got Anne and George. Well, no, I mean her siblings. Yeah, okay, no, but again, I'm still talking the the family. Um, uh, Thomas. Mm Mm-hmm. Henry. Mm Mm-hmm. And Mary. Her two famous ones. And you said her brother, her other brother? George. Yeah, you did. Okay. I did. He got a bonus point there. Well done. Bonus point. She's good. This, I think, is easy, but I just never know. Number five. In 1515... Hold on. I need to say them in order, the siblings. You can't, really. In your opinion? Ooh, it's asking me in my opinion. Okay, well, based on Thomas Boleyn writing a letter to Thomas Cromwell and sort of saying in the early years of their marriage, Elizabeth Boleyn had a baby sort of every year. That's me paraphrasing, not quoting. Um, yeah, I would go for, I think that Mary is the eldest, so I would go Mary, Anne, Thomas, named after his father, Henry, named after the king, and then George. Okay, George was the little baby of the family, in your opinion. Yes. Okay. Okay. There you go. You're cheating. You're, you're trying to put the pressure on me now. I'm just trying to educate the people that are watching this video about something that I have no clue about. You're just trying to look at the answers. Number five. In 1515, after Mary Tudor, sister of Henry VIII, went back to England from France because she had been married to Louis XII and yes. he died, yes. Anne Boleyn, who had been serving her, stayed on in France to serve this woman. Uh, oh, wow. I will know this when you say the answer. Yes. Uh, Queen Claude. Wow. And if that's right, then I have no idea where that answer <laughs> came from. Queen Claude. Oh, fantastic. Queen Claude, yes. Well done. But who was she? A queen. Who was she the wife of? I'm not giving you any bonus. Francis. The well done. France is the first yes. of France. Well done. Way. Okay, number six. Anne Boleyn was romantically linked to the Earl of Northumberland's son and heir on her return to England in the early 1520s. What was his name? Mm. Mm. Nope, I'm not even going to take a guess on that one. Oh, I'm disappointed now. William Carey? <laughs> no. That's Mary Boleyn's husband. Okay, well. I don't think she was romantically linked to her <laughs> sister's <laughs> husband. That, we could start off a new scandal here. Henry Percy. Oh, now you say it, of course. Yes. And Henry Percy, of course, became Earl of Northumberland when his father died. So you did not get that one. Okay, number seven. Anne Boleyn? Thomas Boleyn and George Boleyn successfully fought off this illness in 1528. What was it? I think that's a nice, easy question. And it's one of your favourite subjects, I think. Oh, I have actually written a book on and it. And you've written a book on it. And done a video on it. Sweating sickness. Yes, well done. Good. But poor old William Carey, Mary Boleyn's husband, didn't make it. He died of it. And a lot of other people died of it as well. Horrible disease, horrible illness. Number eight. In September 1532, Henry VIII granted Anne Boleyn a title, raising her to the peerage. Okay, so this is before they were married in preparation for her visit to France with him. Well, visit to Calais. Calais was actually English at the time. It's very complicated. What was the title that he gave her? Um, hopefully going to get it right. Marquis of Pembroke. Marquis of Pembroke. Well done. Wow. 
I gave it to her in books. her own right. I do read your books. So, yeah. Number nine. Who described the Berlins as more Lutheran than Luther himself? That's not a quote that rings any bells with me. Good. Um... Just can I do a, an evil cackling laugh? Yeah, you can. I probably I could. I might even overdub an evil cackling <laughs> laugh on you there. <laughs> Rich from something or other. Um, I have no idea. I'm going to make a guess of William Tyndale. William Tyndall. Tyndall. It's not Tyndale. Tyndale. Well, it depends where you come from. No. No, no he didn't. It was Eustace Shakui, the Imperial Ambassador. And actually, they weren't Lutherans, but that's what. Shapri thought of them. Okay, so you got that one wrong. <clears throat> You're doing really well, though. Thank you. Number 10. Two of Anne's brothers, Thomas and Henry, died in childhood. Henry was buried at St. Peter's Church, Hever, which is just on the green Lovely little church. Yeah. Hever Castle. But where was little Thomas buried? We went to see the grave. We did indeed. And it's at Penshurst, the church just outside Penshurst. Yes. Now, I couldn't tell you what the name of the church is, though. Well, I'm going to get... A lot of people just call it Penshurst Church, so I'll give you that. It's St. John the Baptist Church, Penshurst. Which is also a gorgeous church. Just outside Penshurst Place. Mm. Well worth a visit. It's oh, absolutely lovely. stunning. Beautiful. The, cha the chapel in there is just absolutely beautiful. Sydney Chapel. Gorgeous. It is. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> How many questions are there? Fifteen. Oh, Eleven. You're on the home home straight now. Eleven. Okay. Okay. Mary Boleyn was married twice. Okay. To William Carey, yes. who died from sweat, sweating, sweating, sweating sickness, sickness yeah. or the English sweat or the sweat, in 1528. And then she went on to marry another man. She announced this marriage to Anne Boleyn in September 1534. It was a secret marriage, and she was pregnant. By him when she went to visit Queen Anne Boleyn at court. What was his name? Uh, yes, uh, Charles Brandon. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> did Charles Brandon come into it? <laughs> no, he obviously didn't come into it at all. Who did she get married to? Tell me, Claire. <laughs> William Stafford. Oh, okay. Really? Yes. Okay. Charles Brandon was married to. Mary Tudor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. And then Catherine Willoughby. Oh, now my hair's got it all over the place. <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> Big cross could do better. Okay, number 12. What was the full name of George Boleyn's wife? <laughs> and don't say Boleyn, okay? I want her maiden name. Her maiden name? Mm-hmm. No, I'm all confused now. I have no idea. George Boleyn was the brother of Anne Boleyn. Yes, he was. Okay, and his wife has been falsely accused and been made to look really bad by fiction and some historians. And there's actually no evidence that she did betray the Boleyns in any way. I've done a video on her. I'm sure you have. And... No, I'm going to have to pass on that question. Jane. Boleyn. Parker. <laughs> Lady. Lord Morley's daughter, Jane Parker. <sighs> really it started off so well. Better. Yeah, yeah. I told you it was going to go downhill. Yes, oh dear. You should get this one, though, because you've been here. Number 13. Anne and George, the bells are ringing out there to help you. Anne and George are buried in the chapel of St. Peter Advincula at the Tower of London. Yes. Okay. Their father, Thomas was buried at Hever, St. Peter's Church Hever. Yeah, lovely tomb. Mary Boleyn's resting place is not known. But where was Elizabeth Boleyn, mother of Queen Anne Boleyn, buried after her death in 1538? Well, I'm thinking I'm glad that you told me that we've been there, because that narrows it down quite a lot. It does, it does indeed. The, well, it's the Garden Cafe now. Is that the right place? Mm hmm Which is right next to... Um, well, on the other side of the river, but what's the name of it? I have no idea. It's called the Garden Cafe these days. The Garden days. Museum these days, yeah. Um, I couldn't name the church. But where? 
London? Yes, but... <laughs> just on the other side Which of the River Thames, just the, about 10 minutes down from Westminster certain, Palace. And it's next to a certain... Lambeth Palace? Yeah, but I'm not giving you any... You're any not giving me half a point even No! No, because I had to Go feed on. you there. No! Go no on, point. half a no. point. No. 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 St. Mary's Church Lambeth. Okay. Which is now... Oh, I so you did say the garden music. I will give you half a half point. Half a point, People yeah. are going to complain that no, I'm so No, no, I deserve that half. The garden museum. It's now the garden museum. And actually, um, yes, there's a, a cafe um, inside where we sat. Nice little yes, church. It's, um, she was buried in the Howard Chapel, which was quite a traditional um, resting place for members of the Howard family, especially the women of the Howard family. In fact, Norfolk House was just down the road we went to see the spot where that was which is now a hotel um but yes it's right next to lambeth palace so if you go and visit the that area to see lambeth palace then just pop into the church it still looks like a church but it was saved from demolition by the god museum yeah so oh well worth a visit Ari the cats come to help you now okay number 14 so you've got half a point for that thank you how many books of hours that once belonged to Anne Boleyn are on display in the books of hours in the book of hours room at Hever Castle? It was a wonderful experience you filming there and holding them. Yes, I two. Do. I presume that that was all of them. So therefore, they've got two. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you actually knew that scene as you filmed. Yeah, the, well, um, I enjoyed it. It was an amazing them. experience. Yes. Yes. It was indeed. So you've got that one. Yay. So yes, two books of hours. Okay, final question now. What was Anne Boleyn's main motto as Queen? When she she did actually think of one motto that she had temporarily, but it, it was... Um, which was the let them grumble yes, one. Yes, which wasn't very good, really. That's um, quite funny. She, <laughs> well, yes. It was, uh, yes. Uh, Brilliant. I think... The most happy. Well done. Yes. And that appears on like the, her 1534 medal, Anne Boleyn, the most happy. Yes. <laughs> the <brilliant>. most happy. <laughs> it's an insight, into how, how, it's an insight <laughs> into how they spoke, I'm sure. Well done. Now I've got to add up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half out of sixteen. So there's fifteen questions, but I did the bonus point. Eleven and a half. I think I did better than last time. I think that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half. Thank you. Eleven and a half out of fifteen. Not bad at all. I enjoyed that one. Well, I could do better, I would, you know. How have you done? Yes. Have you been playing along, sir, along with us? Uh, you can... Uh, Tell us in the comments. I'd love to know how you Good did. idea. Yeah, hope you beat me. So. All right. Was that a, enough of a humiliating experience for you? No, I enjoyed that one, actually. That was a good subject. Yeah. Yes. It didn't have too many dates in it. Oh, no, now <laughs> I've given away what the next quiz is going to have. Oh, it. yeah, we could. Oh, I could do dates. No, yeah. don't ask me dates because I have absolutely no You're idea. You're not very good with dates. No, are. no. That's why Egyptian history is so good. Anyway. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you so much for subscribing to the channel as well. It's always uh, good fun to celebrate it by uh, quizzing Tim. Another quiz. I to mention the teacher. Or we can do it. Another quiz in 5,000 subscribers time. Oh, 5,000. Okay. 35,000 yeah. subscribers. Ooh, yeah. I'll be back here again. <laughs> Quick, get <laughs> your friends and family, and colleagues and everyone to uh, subscribe. Um, if you like this t-shirt, the design on this day in Tudor history, something bad happened, um, is on various different styles of t-shirts and hoodies and mugs and phone cases and yep, the works. So. Uh, Just a bit of fun. Nicely done by uh, Teespring. Um, and you should be able to see them on a kind of shelf underneath this video. So if you do want to uh, wear this lovely t-shirt, or to have something with this uh, kind of motto on, then uh, you can order those. Um, but yes, thank you for joining us. And we'll be back with another challenge very soon. And of course, I'll be back very soon too. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> or today. Or today. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.